Shalom, welcome to another edition of Search the Scriptures. I'm Dr. Todd Baker, Director of Barit Chadashah Ministries in Dallas, Texas. Barit Chadashah Ministries uh, is dedicated to explaining and teaching the Jewish roots of Christianity and taking the Jewish Jesus back to his people according to the flesh, the Jewish people, and bringing the gospel to the Jewish people of Israel. We do that three times a year. We're one of the only few ministries today in the church that regularly seeks to obey the divine order of evangelism given under the mandate of the Great Commission, and that is to take the gospel back to the Jewish people. I've even had some friends try to tell me, well, you need to tone that down. Maybe you would get some more money. And I just have to uh, shrug my shoulders and sh shake my head in disdainful incredulity. I'm not going to tone that down. God loves Israel. He said, he said to them that he loves them with an everlasting love. God sent them the Moses, the prophets, and the Messiah, his son, first. He sent them first to the Jewish people. And the Bible clearly tells us that... Uh, the church is to fulfill the Great Commission, that is to preach the gospel, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that is to be done to the Jew first, Romans 1.16. So nobody is going to uh, de-emphasize that or uh, tone it down in order to get money from people. That's not what we're about here. Yes, we need financial support to continue this ministry and by God's grace he will provide it. the source for our support uh, for Barit Chadashah Ministries does not lie in man or even in the church but its source of provision is Jehovah Jireh uh, the Lord our provider uh, I also lead Shalom Shalom Messianic Congregation and we meet every Shabbat every Friday evening at 7 p.m. at Northwest Bible Church in the Christian Life Center building, room 301 on the third floor. The address is 8505 Douglas Avenue, Dallas, Texas 75231. Uh, you can also receive our free quarterly newsletter. And the lead story for each newsletter is... Um, witnessing encounters that we have had with the Jewish people in Israel. And in this uh, spring 2018 edition, I talk about uh, what we experienced on the 43rd Gospel Outreach to Israel. We've been taking uh, Yeshua back to the Jewish people now for almost 18 years. And we really need your support, folks. Support for this ministry has been down for almost the last two years and we're barely skating by. We've had to cut back on going to Israel. We were going three, four times a year, but because of the lack of funds, we've had to cut that back to two times a year. And really, and we've also had to cut the days of those outreaches. It used to be two weeks, three to four times a year. Now it's only barely a week each outreach that we go and it's only two times a year. So I'm asking those of you in the body of Messiah, the church, to pray about supporting us and support us. And you can simply do that by going to the donation link, clicking on that underneath the title of today's message. Uh, you can write to us, send us your support. You can write to us uh, and send your prayer requests in. We do take prayer requests too the Western Wall in Jerusalem. You can write to us at BHM, M, uh, as in Michael, BHM, P.O. Box 796127, Dallas, Texas, zip code 75379. You can also call us at the toll-free number 866-910-0444. So please, folks, uh, help us out, support us, 
Uh, praise the Lord. We've been able to get a few uh, new supporters due to these uh, teaching broadcasts that come to you every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now, this Thursday, uh, the broadcast will be a little late uh, due to a prior commitment that I have, so we'll be coming on this Thursday probably around 2 to 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So we will be on, but it won't be at 1. All right, let's get down to this. We have been talking about Israel, the super sign of the end times. That is, the rebirth and reconstitution of the modern-day Jewish state of Israel was prophesied in the Bible to occur in the end times, or last days, before the coming of Messiah, or I should say the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have been showing you historically how uh, events uh, led up to the great end time fulfillment of Bible prophecy, that is the rebirth of the modern state of Israel in 1948. Last time we were with you, we talked about uh, the Balfour Declaration, and uh, so I won't repeat myself. Um, you can uh, refer or go back and watch Israel, the Super Sign of the End Times, Part 3, to learn about the Balfour Declaration. But basically, the Balfour Declaration was an authoritative uh, document by the British government during World War I. It was issued in 1917, stating in effect that the Jewish people have a right to have a homeland of their own in the ancient land where the nation of Israel lived. The Balfour Declaration was confirmatory of this truth in the affairs of human government, and it illustrates the fact that in the common mundane and ordinary affairs of men, God sovereignly, God sovereignly chose a particular point in time and history to, to fulfill his plan for history through the instrumentality of rulers, authorities, and individuals. Implementation of, implementation of the Balfour Declaration occurred a year later, in 1918, when the Zionist Commission, headed by Chaim Weizmann, and we talked about him in part three of this series, Chaim Weizmann traveled to what was then called Palestine to begin surveying the land for the return of the Jewish immigrants to Israel. And this was set to occur, and then the catastrophe of World War II, Nazi Germany, and the Holocaust ensued, delaying and endangering the plan to have Israel return to their homeland, their ancient homeland. A modern myth about this period of time, usually promoted by Arab propaganda and Western media, is that there were hardly any Jews living in Israel at the beginning of the 20th century. So when the Jews did come back in mass uh, by the hundreds of thousands and became the nation of Israel again in 1948, the Arab world and the Western media, who has an anti-Semitic agenda or anti-Israel agenda, said, well, they can't call that their home because there were hardly any Jews there to begin with. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. There were already as many as 55,000 Jews living in the land, the Promised Land, by 1918, and were later to serve as the demographic nucleus for a reborn Jewish state. Indeed, from the time of Christ, there has always been a significant Jewish presence living in the Holy Land, after the dispersion of AD 70, President Woodrow Wilson publicly voiced the American government's full support of the Balfour Declaration on August 31st, 1918. And then after World War II, the UN took up this issue about uh, granting the Jews right to return to their ancient homeland of Israel, and they voted uh, to allow this to happen, President Harry S. Truman and his administration, to his great credit, they were they exerted a heavy influence on the UN Council 
in favor of allowing the Jews to return to their ancient homeland Israel to become the nation of Israel again. In fact, I have in my library up here, and I don't see it, but it is a, a book about uh, Harry S. Truman's involvement with the rebirth of the nation of Israel. And of course we know on May 14, 1948, the formal, the formal UN declaration with heavy U.S. backing declared the state of Israel. And Ben Gurion was the first Prime Minister of Israel and he said in the Independence Hall in Tel Aviv, he issued a statement that the Jewish people have returned to their ancient homeland to become the state of Israel's uh, existence. But even in the late 19-teens was the beginning of the United States' long support for the existence of the Jewish state of Israel and one of the main reasons why God has so richly blessed our nation to this day. All the more, we as American Bible-believing Zionist Christians must always defend the the Jewish people's right to exist in their own ancient homeland as the nation of Israel. In these rattling and shaking sounds of an ancient people being called back to their God-given homeland, a very important prophecy of the end times was and is being fulfilled. Now. It's being fulfilled now. A prophecy of the rebirth and the regathering of the Jewish people back to Israel by God from the graveyard of nations where he had previously scattered them. This prophecy, I tell you, is none other than the famous dry bones prophecy of Ezekiel 37. A prophecy that begins with the noise of rattling and shaking. Ezekiel 37, 7. And in this prophecy of Ezekiel 37, we have the, the vision of the valley of the dry bones. And this vision, uh, God, through this vision, God shows Ezekiel the end time and, and gradual restoration of Israel. There are two stages to Israel's regathering to their ancient homeland. There is first the partial regathering into their homeland in unbelief. That is happening now. It is being fulfilled now. Then there will be the full regathering of all surviving Jews after the tribulation. Uh, Messiah will return and regather all remaining Jews that are scattered throughout the world and bring them back to Israel. Failure to make a biblical distinction between these two regatherings of the Jewish people back in, into their ancient homeland to fulfill in time prophecy is one of the critical errors and mistakes uh, traditional seminaries and leaders of those seminaries who are premillennial and dispensational uh, <clears throat> failure to make that distinction between the partial and full regathering has caused these uh, seminaries and the leaders running them to say to mistakenly say that the present day regathering of Jews back into the land of Israel and the rebirth of the nation of Israel in May 14th, 1948 is not necessarily a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. We're going to blow away that uh, ignorant and uh, gross oversight here during this teaching. But I want to focus on the dry bones vision of Ezekiel 37. The prophecy of Ezekiel 37 is surely by far the greatest singular fulfillment of Bible prophecy in the present time since the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The opening of Ezekiel 37, uh, the prophecy, uh, introduces us uh, with a vision God gave the prophet Ezekiel of the fallen nation of Israel, depicted as a scattered pile of dry, bleached, and lifeless bones lying across an open valley floor. Listen to what Ezekiel says in Ezekiel 37 of this. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. When he, then, then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. Ezekiel verses 1 and 2. The Lord informs the prophet Ezekiel, that this disturbing scene of skeletons strewn as far as the eye could see pictures 
the scattered and hopeless state of the Jewish people throughout the world, cut off and without a national homeland, seemingly left for dead as a people in the nations where they had been dispersed. This is the depiction of the second diaspora of the Jewish people. Because only in that diaspora were the Jews scattered throughout the whole world. And that's what, and that's the scene uh, given here that is laid before us in Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, 11, uh, is, uh, we have the prophet saying, uh, the Lord telling him, Then he, that's the Lord, said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. One cannot help but see here in this macabre imagery how accurate of a picture this was for Israel during the second diaspora, especially during the time of the Holocaust when literally millions of the people of Israel were gathered in mass open graves where bodies were left to decay into skeletons indiscriminately piled one on top of the other. When the Western Allies liberated the Jews from the Nazi concentration camps, they were utterly horrified, horrified to see the very thing Ezekiel describes about Israel in Ezekiel 37 verses 1 and 2. Skeletal remains and corpses of thousands and thousands of Jewish men, women, and children carelessly scattered and piled in heaps everywhere. One British soldier and liberator's description of what he saw at the Nazi concentration camp of Belsen hauntingly underscores the vision of dry bones in Ezekiel 37. When this soldier observed that, quote, corpses in every state of decay were lying around, piled on top of each other in heaps. There were corpses in the compound in flocks. People were falling dead all around. People were walking skeletons. The Holocaust was the last and the worst of what the Jewish people endured in the second diaspora from the anti-Semitic Gentile nations and left many of them feeling, according to the prophetic words of Ezekiel 37.11, hopeless, cut off, and seemingly abandoned by the God of Israel to face such a terrible end. Ah, but what was a hopeless condition for Israel beyond the help and ability of themselves and man to repair and rectify was not beyond the power of God. For in verse 3, God rhetorically asked, verse 3 of Ezekiel 37, God rhetorically asked Ezekiel, if indeed the scattered house of Israel, pictured as dead dry bones, scattered in an open valley, can ever be restored to live again. And we read, Ezekiel 37, 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, you know. Ezekiel, Ezekiel wisely knew that what lay before him was humanly impossible to fix and that, the only, and that only the power of the sovereign Lord could repair the irreparable. From the outset, we see here that the origin of Israel's national restoration to their God-given ancient homeland would be supernatural in nature and a sole act of God in the affairs of man. A thing, a thing recently witnessed some 70 years ago with the rebirth of Israel 1948. So Ezekiel 37 is talking about the gradual restoration of the Jewish people and their regathering from all the nations back into the land of Israel. Note this is not a spontaneous and uh, complete regathering at one time. It is gradual, indicated by the fact that first the skeletons are gathered, uh, they're regrouped, they stand up, and then flesh and sinew and muscle are placed upon them. So they're physically alive, yet spiritually dead. That's where we are in the fulfillment of the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37. Israel has been regathered and restored from the second diaspora when they were left for dead among the graveyard of the Gentile nations. Now they have been regathered. And Ezekiel says uh, that these uh, regathered and reassembled skeletons 
with flesh and muscles put back on them. Once that happened, they stood upon their feet and became an exceedingly great army. Ezekiel 37.10. And that's exactly what happened with the modern rebirth of Israel 1948. As soon as the Jews physically regathered into their ancient homeland to become the nation of Israel again, they had to assemble a great military army. Why? Because the Arab nations invaded Israel once Israel made their declaration of independence on May 14, 1948. The Jews were regathered and they had to assemble an army quickly and they defeated, uh, they defeated the Arab nations that invaded Israel. So again, Ezekiel accurately predicts what has been fulfilled with the rebirth of Israel in May 14, 1948. So the next part of this vision that has to be fulfilled is when the Lord will uh, breathe upon him and give them the Holy Spirit so they will be saved and born again, spiritually regenerated. And of course, Israel's national salvation to that end awaits the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the first phase of, his, of the prophecy of Ezekiel 37 for Israel in the end times has already been fulfilled. They have been physically reassembled and regathered back into the land of Israel as a fighting military force, and that was fulfilled and has happened and has been happening since May 14, 1948. And these uh, professors at seminaries that were traditionally premillennial and dispensational, they fail to see that Ezekiel 37 is fulfilled in two stages. They mistakenly think that all of it will be fulfilled at one time. And because they fail to make this distinction, they greatly err in saying, well, we don't know if modern-day Israel is a fulfillment of end-time prophecy. Who can say? Or they just say it isn't. They come right, come right out and deny it against the biblical evidence and the historical evidence that confirms and fulfills uh, part of what Ezekiel 37 prophesies. From the outset, we see that the origin of Israel's nas national restoration to their God-given ancient homeland would be supernatural in nature and a sole act of God in the affairs of men, a thing recently witnessed and fulfilled some 70 years ago with the rebirth of Israel in May of 1948. Furthermore, this restoration of Israel from the graveyard of the Gentile nations would be by the supernatural power of of the Spirit of God. Thus we further read in Ezekiel 37, 4 and 5, Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Here we see from the opening of Ezekiel chapter 37 that the Spirit of God reveals, predicts, and brings to pass that which concerns Israel's physical restoration as a nation and their spiritual regeneration happening after that, as predicted in Ezekiel 37, 13 through 14, uh, which this, those two verses picture Israel's spiritual redemption and regeneration under the future king, Messiah, which is uh, Ezekiel 37 verses 24 through 28 foretell. So that part of the prophecy of Ezekiel 37, of course, awaits the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice here that the breath of God mentioned in Ezekiel 37 um, is Ruach. This is the Holy Spirit, the third person, the triune Godhead. In the Hebrew text of Ezekiel 37, 5, the word breath is translated to mean breath, wind, and spirit. Ruach, which is the same Hebrew word used for the breath or spirit of God, found in Genesis 2, 7, when God made man a living spiritual being and breathed into his nostrils the ruach, the breath of life. And now here in Ezekiel 37, we see that this ruach, this spirit of God, is the very... Uh, is the very same agent and person involved in the resurrection and regeneration of the nation of Israel. The Spirit of God is the one who gives life to both the physically dead and the spiritually dead, John 6, 63 and Romans 8, 11 respectively. 
the Spirit of God is the one who gives life uh, to both the physically and spiritually dead through the word spoken and given to man. For when God speaks, it is done as witnessed by the creation of the cosmos in Genesis 1. And it's now being currently, it's now being currently seen with the restoration of the Jewish people back to the land of Israel. I think spoken and predicted by God some 2,580 years ago through the prophet Ezekiel, presently witnessed and fulfilled in our day, without a doubt, with the Jews continuing to return to the land of Israel since they became a nation again in 1948. But I want you to observe, as I've said earlier, in Ezekiel 37, verses 5 through 8, this national restoration currently happening in the last seven decades will be progressive and gradual in nature. That's so important to remember. The restoration and regathering of Israel will of Jews back into the land of Israel will be progressive and gradual in nature as the bones first come together on the skeletons, and then the flesh forms on them with the skin to cover them, following after to complete the physical process. For God goes on to say about this gradual restoration of Israel. In Ezekiel 37, he says, I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. So I prophesy. Now, this is what Ezekiel, in obedience to the word of the Lord, speaks that word. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. This at once shows the regathering and restoration of Israel, the Jewish people, back into the land of Israel, not to be a sudden and completed event, but one that will be gradually fulfilled over an extended period of time. And then will finally culminate in a complete restoration when the King Messiah Jesus returns to Israel to establish his universal kingdom over all the world as the closing verses of Ezekiel 37 clearly predict in verses 21 through 28. Now a failure to recognize the particular feature of this prophecy concerning Israel's gradual restoration to the land before in unbelief before Jesus the Messiah to return has caused several Bible teachers who are premillennial and dispensational who see a future for Israel and see that they are distinct from the church, yes, has caused some of these teachers believing that to either doubt or deny that present day Israel is a fulfillment of end time Bible prophecy. And they deny it to their ignorance. And they are without excuse. I'll give you one example. My alma mater, I graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary with a master's in theology, a THM degree. And uh, the current president of Dallas Theological Seminary, Mark Bailey, who I had for several of my classes in the mid-90s, he sadly doubts that modern-day present Israel, the modern-day nation of Israel, is a fulfillment of prophecy. Here's what he says in uh, the theological journal Veritas, volume 2, number 3, page 4. So I'm not just making this up. Here's what he says about Israel uh, being a present-day fulfillment of end-time Bible prophecy. He says this concerning the Jews being regathered to their ancient homeland. Is that what is happening today? In other words, is this fulfilling end-time prophecy? He says, quote, I can't say for sure. It is the first time in 2,500 years, though, that you have this kind of constitution of people in the land. But I don't know what that means. This may be the prelude to end-time events, but I think we're presumptuous if we try to give it meaning beyond that. It may be that's all we can say. Well, speak for yourself, Mark. Speak for yourself. There so he is, he is taking an, agno, an, an agnostic view that doubts that the regathering of the Jewish people and the rebirth of modern-day Israel in 1948 is a fulfillment of end-time prophecy. 
And to say so, he thinks is presumptuous. Well, he better read the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36 of Ezekiel, which leads to the rebirth of Israel in Ezekiel 37, which prophesies a gradual regathering of Israel. First, there's the partial regathering to their land in unbelief. That's happening now. But he fails to make that distinction that there will be two regatherings of Israel in the last days. The Bible predicts two regatherings. As I've said, the first regathering is the partial regathering of Jews back into the land of Israel in unbelief. Then when Messiah returns, that will be the second regathering of Jews back into the land. And that will be a full regathering to the land in belief. He fails to make that distinction. And because he fails to make that biblical distinction, Dr. Mark Bailey uh, denies uh, the certainty of modern day Israel being a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And this, uh, later on in the same article in Veritas, this leads uh, Dr. Bailey, in the light of his view, uh, to uh, recommend that Christians not support Israel politically. This is shameful, folks. He better read Genesis 12, 1 through 3, where God says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those uh, who curse you. Uh, the Bible does clearly tell us that what is happening today with the modern rebirth of Israel is a work of God. It's not presumptuous to say that. That's what Scripture says, and it's a great sign of the end times. And he's not the only one uh, that casts doubt on this fact. Other seminaries like Talbot Seminary, uh, Moody Bible Seminary, uh, I've got a list of it, a list of them here. Moody Seminary, Dallas Seminary, Talbot Seminary. These are just to name a few. These are seminaries that are premillennial, dispensational. They see a future for Israel. Uh, they are now casting doubt on modern day Israel being a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And I'm saying they, they do so in total ignorance of what the Bible predicts about the two regatherings of Israel in the last day. We are seeing the partial regathering of Israel in the land in unbelief. That is a fulfillment, a partial fulfillment of Ezekiel 37. And it's a fulfillment of the other prophecies in the Old Testament where God says he would regather the Israel before the return of the Messiah and would gather them in unbelief. Listen, they're going to have to be there and they're going to have to be reconstituted as a nation and state uh, for the tribulation period. So I want to ask these guys like Dr. Mark Bailey and uh, Dr. Homer Heater, who used to teach at Dallas Center and also denied Israel's a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And Zola Levitt rightly took him on and the DTS uh, position for that. I want to ask these guys in these seminaries that are premillennial and dispensational, I want to ask them, uh, when, pray tell, will the Jews be a nation again? If not now, they certainly have to be one before the seven-year tribulation period begins. And furthermore, uh, concrete and material preparations for the third temple is already in place with a restored Levitical priesthood now that scientists can determine which Jews come from the priestly line by the Levite gene. They, they, these guys that I just mentioned, they, they completely ignore all this and arrogantly say that we can't say for certain that modern-day Israel is currently in fulfillment of Bible prophecy, and to say so is presumptuous. Oh, really? Well, they remind me of the Pharisees and the Sadducees in Matthew 16. They came to Jesus and wanted him to show them a sign from heaven proving he was the Messiah. Well, the signs had already been given by Jesus. He was healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. All that messianic prophecy foretold about the Messiah's first coming, and yet... These religious leaders refuse to see that as a fulfillment. And so they come to Jesus asking him to show them a sign from heaven proving he was, a Messiah, he was the Messiah. And Jesus answered and said, when it, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the sign of the times. Matthew 16, 1 through 4. So in other words, 
the restoration of Israel in these last days, the partial regathering of the Jews back there in unbelief before the Messiah returns, was foretold in Scripture and is being fulfilled now. And to deny that or to question the certainty of that is hypocritical of them because they are already aware of end time prophecies concerning the regathering of Israel. So they're no better than the Pharisees and Sadducees who denied the signs of Jesus' first coming. And in the face of that evidence, they doubt and say, well, give us, give us a sign. And I'm afraid that's what these seminaries and the presidents of these seminaries are doing. They're repeating the same sin of unbelief that the Pharisees and Sadducees committed towards Jesus in Mark 16, 1 through 4, and that is all there is to that. And then I would ask them, what about Amos 8, 14 and 15? When God regathers Israel from the second dispersion, it says they will not be uprooted or removed from their land again. What do they think is taking place now in Israel? Indeed, to cast doubt on God's current and present day regathering of the Jews into the ancient homeland he gave them forever as a fulfillment of prophecy is, uh, is a uh, denial of God at work in modern day Israel. Again, there are many reasons why we can say that the modern state of Israel is prophetically significant and of stage and of stage-setting significance for the tribulation. First of all, Israel is not going to get pushed into the Mediterranean Sea again, Dr. Bailey, Dr. Homer Heater, and others who deny present-day Israel is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. God does not play cat-and-mouse mind games with the chosen people. He hasn't allowed them to come back into their land and become a nation again for the first time in 2,500 years, which is unprecedented in the history of the world, just so they can allow them to be scattered to the world again. France, England, and Germany and the United States are not mentioned hundreds of times throughout the Bible, as is the case with Israel. Israel is not just another nation of the world. The Bible says many times that Israel is not done in history. But many Christians act as if there were not true and they better refresh themselves about Romans 11.1. 1. There Paul says, Has God cast away his people whom he foreknow? People referring to the Jewish people. Paul's answer is, No, never. There are dozens of biblical passages that clearly predict an end-time regathering of Israel back to her land. However, it is a common mistake like these gentlemen are doing to lump all of these passages into one absolute fulfillment time frame, especially in relation to the modern state of Israel. Modern Israel is prophetically significant and is fulfilling Bible prophecy now. I just read it to you in Ezekiel 37. But readers of God's Word need to be careful to distinguish which verses are being fulfilled in our day and which references await future fulfillment during the tribulation period and at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, to summarize, the Bible predicts there will be two end-time regatherings of the Jewish people back into the land of Israel. One before the tribulation. That will be the partial regathering of Jews to the land in unbelief. That is happening and being fulfilled in our day. And then the second regathering will occur after the tribulation at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That will be a full regathering of Jewish exiles, and they will be regathered as they look upon him whom they've pierced and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I like what Hebrew Christian scholar Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum, a graduate of Dallas Seminary, I like how he explains the biblical basis for the current state of Israel as follows. He says, quote, The reestablishment of the Jewish state in 1948 has not only thrown a wrench in amillennial thinking, amillennial, those who deny a literal thousand-year kingdom of Christ. So it's thrown a wrench in amillennial thinking. He goes on. But it, but it has also thrown a chink in much of premillennial thinking. Premillennialists believe in a literal thousand-year earthly kingdom of Christ. 
Dr. Futenbrang goes on. Amazingly, he says, some premillennialists have concluded that the present state of Israel has nothing to do with the fulfillment of prophecy. For some reason, the present state somehow does not fit in their scheme of things. And so the present state becomes merely an accident of history. On what grounds is the present state of Israel so dismissed? The issue that brothers... Uh, sorry, the issue that bothers so many premillennialists is the fact that not only have the Jews returned in unbelief with regard to the person of Jesus, but the majority of the ones who have returned are not even Orthodox Jews. In fact, the majority are atheists or agnostics. Certainly then, Israel does not fit in with all those biblical passages dealing with the return. For it is a regenerated nation that the Bible speaks of, and the present state of Israel hardly fits that picture. So on these grounds, the present state is dismissed as not being a fulfillment of prophecy. And then Dr. Fruchtenbaum goes on. However, the real problem is the failure to see that the prophet spoke of two international returns. First, there was to be a regathering in unbelief in preparation for judgment, namely the judgment of the tribulation. This was to be followed by a second worldwide regathering in faith in preparation for blessing, namely the blessings of the Messianic age. Once it is recognized that the Bible speaks of two such regatherings, it is easy to see how this present state of Israel fits into prophecy. And this is where guys, uh, leaders at DTS, Talbot and Moody, seminaries, they fail to rightly divide the word in that uh, they do not rightly make the biblical distinction between the two regatherings of Israel. But the Bible does say Israel would first be gathered or, uh, back into the land in unbelief. This is the worldwide gathering in unbelief and it's happening in our time. In 1948, when the modern state of Israel was born, it not only became an important stage setting development, but began an actual fulfillment of specific Bible prophecies about an international regathering of the Jews in unbelief before the judgment of the tribulation. That is what is being set up now since May 14, 1948. Such a prediction about an international regathering of Jews into the land in unbelief is found throughout the Old Testament. And let me give you just a sampling of those. Ezekiel 20, verses 33 through 38. Ezekiel 22, 17 through 22. Ezekiel 36, verses 22 through 34. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14, which we did an overview of. Isaiah 11, 11 and 12. Zephaniah 2, 1 and 2. And I could go on and on. So, folks, make no bones about it, no pun intended, as we talk about the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37. Make, make no bones about it. The current regathering of the Jewish people back into the land to become the nation of Israel again, uh, regathered from all the world, international regathering and unbelief, was prophesied in Scripture and what has gone on in Israel in the last 70 years since they became, officially became a nation on May 14, 1948, is unequivocally, indisputably, and without doubt, a fulfillment of end-time Bible prophecy. And these failed leaders at these seminaries who should know better, who have historically made a distinction between the church and Israel, who have historically believed in Israel's end-time prophetic future, uh, they simply have failed to see the distinction here between the two regatherings prophesied for Israel in the last days. And uh, that's why it's so important to test people by the Word of God. Be a Berean Christian. Don't, just don't take what these leaders are saying at face value because they have uh, umpteen degrees behind their name. Nothing wrong with studying to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But at the same time, 
Do your own homework. Get into the scriptures themselves. See if what someone is telling you is in fact biblical or not. Modern Israel is a work, a supernatural work of God and a fulfillment of end time prophecy. No doubt about that. God keeps his word and he is fulfilling his word even as I speak. Well, uh, we'll close it down for now. Again, folks, please help us out. Um, we need your support so we can continue bringing you biblically informed messages like this twice a week uh, that we can come to you uh, from our Shabbat services every Friday evening at 7.15 p.m. so that we can continue taking the gospel to the Jewish people two to three times a year. We need your financial help in doing that. And you can help us by clicking on that donation link uh, below uh, below uh, the message, the title of uh, the message for today. Well, Lord willing, I'll see you this Thursday. Remember, uh, this Thursday we'll be on uh, not at 1 p.m. as we normally are because of a prior commitment I made, but also um, uh, know that uh, we're here, we'll be here twice a week. This Thursday we'll be on instead of 1 p.m. We'll be on either around 2 or 2.30 p.m. at the latest. So look for us. And until then, Shalom, Yeshua HaMashiach Alechem. May the peace of Jesus the Messiah be with you. We look forward to providing you with continuing Bible messages each week on this station. God bless you.